everyone, this is Erica from Technology Goddess and Theme Zoom, and I'm here today to talk to you about Open Social, Open ID, and some of the great new resources that are coming our way with both and Google Friend Connect. So there seems to be a lot of confusion out there about what these different applications are, and hopefully I'll be able to clear a little bit of that up for you here tonight. So we're going to start off with Open Social. Open Social is pretty much spearheaded by Google, and the overall vision is an API that works in all social networks with full data portability, and that it's secure data portability um, with open source coding for innovation. The reason that they have opened it as open source coding for the widgets and the APIs is to really create innovation and new ideas. And it seems to be working because if you look at some of the widgets that are out there from MySpace and some of the great new APIs that have been developed as a result of open source, they have over 4,500 APIs in use right now and over 350 million users. And almost all of the major social networks have now signed on um, with open source and opened up their coding for developers. Um, almost all of them. Facebook um, basically walked out of open source and they have developed their own open source code and opened their own developers and their own APIs. They basically decided that Google was a little too open with their open source, which is really funny when you look at it, because the whole idea of open source is data portability. But um, Facebook felt that Google did not have enough security parameters in place as far as their users' information. In other words, they didn't want to share and play nicely with others. They wanted to keep everything in their own little sandbox. So um, Facebook has quite a few applications as well. From what I understand, the Facebook open source APIs have been downloaded and installed over 700 million times. So they're actually leading um, over what Google has developed here a little bit um, because of the size of their user base. Um, next we have OpenID. The vision of OpenID is basically one login to rule them all. And the reason OpenID came about um, was because of the development and the technology of so many social networks, each one siloing its own information and its own data. So you go to MySpace and you have to log in and remember your password. And then you have to enter your name and your city and all of your information and pictures and photos. Then you go to the next social network and you have to do it all over again. And every time you join a social network, you have to create a new user ID and upload all your information again, and it becomes so tedious that it's not even fun anymore. So the idea of OpenID was that you would have one login and one password across all social networks so that you wouldn't have to remember so many um, different ways to get into your profiles. Um, as an example of what OpenID is, you can go to http technologygoddess.myopenid.com. This is what's called an issued OpenID. Through the OpenID project, everyone can get a free OpenID. Now, I got mine through the OpenID project. If you are a Yahoo user or a Google user with a Gmail account um, or a Faxo user, um, you will already have an open ID that you can utilize. You just have to do a brief search in your application, find out what page you go to, like in Yahoo, they have a specific page that you go to to activate your Yahoo open ID. So almost everybody out there already has a free open ID. It's just a matter of which one you choose to use. I chose to register with the Open ID network because I wanted a branded Open ID. In other words, I didn't want my Gmail account login as my Open ID. I wanted it to be Technology Goddess, my brand. Um, you can also create your own Open ID by uploading an Open ID identifier with your own URL, your own blog, and you do this at the Open ID Project website. So, for instance, www.theme-zoom.com, the ThemeZoom blog, will soon become an open ID with the ThemeZoom identifier. What this means is that when you go to any social network, your URL is identified as your open ID, and then all you have to remember is your password. So when you log in through open ID, their computer does a check to see, is this really
clearly you, is this your open ID, and verify your network. So open ID is a brilliant idea, and I've been utilizing it now for a few months and really enjoying it because I don't have nearly as many passwords to remember now that I've set up my open ID network. Um, essentially, there's about 75 networks that are on board or more. There's probably more because I checked this a few days ago, and they're coming on board every day. Um, Yahoo, Google, Plaxo, like I said, are some of the leaders in the whole OpenID project. Once again, Facebook, they don't want to participate in OpenID right now, although there is a petition out there with a lot of people signing it asking Facebook to implement OpenID. And a couple of hackers have been brilliant enough to create hack ways to use their open ID to log into Facebook. So if you're really motivated, you can find a way to use your open ID on Facebook already. Okay? Next we're going to talk about um, open ID and data portability. Data portability is big because as we're moving from web 2.0 to web 3.0, we're moving into what a lot of people are calling cloud computing, or computing from the beam, which means that less and less you're relying on your desktop applications and programs, and more and more you're relying on APIs that are on the web, and you're logging into software on the web and using that rather than actually downloading things on your desktop. Data portability gives you the ability to take all of your profile and network information with you everywhere you go. It's like me everywhere I go. And that's what I want. I don't want to have to recreate me every time I go to a new website. I just want me to follow along with me. So the vision of data portability is one friend network to rule them all. Me everywhere I go. Um, and the thing that's unique about da the data portability is that they also want it to be searchable and indexable by the bots and that it identifies you who you know, your friends, the friends of your friends, and all of your websites, blogs, networks, including the websites, blogs, networks, and profi profiles that you hang out on or frequent. They're accomplishing this through two primary ways right now, FOF and XFN. FOF, F-O-A-F, friend of a friend. It is an RF, RDF, XML, semantic web language, and data portability file. Basically, it's a site map of your networks, and I want you to really take note of that. It's a site map of your network, okay? And it's searchable and indexable by the bots. How do we know this? Because Google issued a statement on their Google Social Graph page that says, I quote, we currently index XFN, both markup, and other publicly declared Connection, Google. Okay, so that means essentially when you create a faux file, the bots are going to follow it and they're going to index your network. And I've had excellent results with this so far. My entire network is now indexed thanks to my faux file. How do you create a faux file and upload it to your network? Well, it's very easy. The way that I created my faux file was I first went to my blog log on Yahoo, which is a faux friendly network. And they have a little button there where once you enter all of your networks, you can press that and it will take you to a FOF page. You can then download that page and add your own networks that you haven't listed um, with Yahoo and create your own unique file. Every time you add a new network, you're going to need to update your file and reload your file um, to all of your networks, okay? XFN is essentially a, U a URL or a a URL or link annotation that you add in your links on your blog or on your social profiles. So when you have a blog role and you want to identify someone on your network as being in your network, you can say REL equals friend, colleague, cohabitant, sweetheart, muse, brother, sister, whatever. They have a whole list of all of the identifiers that you can use. Okay? And we have about two minutes left here. So I'm going so, um, so we're going to go ahead and finish this. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up for now, and I'll give you the rest of the information with the Google Friend Connect on the next video.